April 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 7 from the New Testament. Then the high priest said, Are these things true? So he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our forefather Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he settled in Haran, and said to him, Go out from your country and from your relatives and come to the land I will show you. Then he went out from the country of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After his father died, God made him move to this country where you now live. He did not give any of it to him for an inheritance, not even a foot of ground. Yet God promised to give it to him as his possession and to his descendants after him, even though Abraham as yet had no child. But God spoke as follows, Your descendants will be foreigners in a foreign country, whose citizens will enslave them and mistreat them for four hundred years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, said God. And after these things they will come out there and worship me in this place. Then God gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision, and so he became the father of Isaac, and circumcised him when he was eight days old. And Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs, because they were jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles, and granted him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who made him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Then a famine occurred throughout Egypt and Canaan, causing great suffering and our ancestors could not find food. So when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our ancestors there the first time. On their second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers again, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. So Joseph sent a message and invited his father Jacob and all his relatives to come, 75 people in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt and died there along with our ancestors, and their bones were later moved to Shechem and placed in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a certain sum of money from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. But as the time drew near for God to fulfill the promise he had declared to Abraham, the people increased greatly in number in Egypt, until another king who did not know about Joseph ruled over Egypt. This was the one who exploited our people and was cruel to our ancestors, forcing them to abandon their infants so they would die. At that time Moses was born and he was beautiful to God. For three months he was brought up in his father's house, and when he had been abandoned, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. So Moses was trained in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in his words and deeds. But when he was about 40 years old, it entered his mind to visit his fellow countrymen, the Israelites. When he saw one of them being hurt unfairly, Moses came to his defense and avenged the person who was mistreated by striking down the Egyptian. He thought his own people would understand that God was delivering them through him, but they did not understand. The next day, Moses saw two men fighting and tried to make peace between them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why are you hurting one another? But the man who was unfairly hurting his neighbor pushed Moses aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? You don't want to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian yesterday, do you? When the man said this, Moses fled and became a foreigner in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. After forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the desert of Mount Sinai, in the flame of a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight, and when he approached to investigate, there came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses began to tremble and did not dare to look more closely. But the Lord said to him, Take the sandals off your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have certainly seen the suffering of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to rescue them. Now come, I will send you to Egypt. 
This same Moses they had rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and judge? God sent as both ruler and deliverer through the hand of the angel, who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, performing wonders and miraculous signs in the land of Egypt, at the Red Sea, and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. This is the man who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our ancestors, and he received living oracles to give to you. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him, but pushed him aside and turned back to Egypt in their hearts, saying to Aaron, Make us gods who will go in front of us. For this Moses who led us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. At that time they made an idol in the form of a calf, brought a sacrifice to the idol, and began rejoicing in the works of their hands. But God turned away from them, and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. It was not to me that you offered slain animals and sacrifices forty years in the wilderness, was it, house of Israel? But you took along the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of the god Rephan, the images you made to worship, but I will deport you beyond Babylon. Our ancestors had the tabernacle of testimony in the wilderness, just as God, who spoke to Moses, ordered him to make it according to the design he had seen. Our ancestors received possession of it and brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our ancestors until the time of David. He found favor with God and asked that he could find a dwelling place for the house of Jacob. But Solomon built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and earth is a footstool for my feet. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is my resting place? Did my hand not make all these things? You stubborn people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are always resisting the Holy Spirit like your ancestors did. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold long ago the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law by decrees given by angels, but you did not obey it. When they heard these things, they became furious and ground their teeth at him, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked intently toward heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, shouting out with a loud voice and rushed at him with one intent. When they had driven him out of the city, they began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. They continued to stone Stephen while he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. God, it's amazing watching Stephen lay the groundwork for, for us to become disciples for the whole entire world. From Stephen, uh, the rest of the the rest of the crew uh, was sent out, and they started expanding out uh, to talk about you. And for me, that gets really exciting because all the discipline training that that I'm going through and different people that I'm helping with, um, it's just amazing to kind of see where where those first fingers of of the discipleship actually started to move out. But one of my uh, favorite parts of this of this chapter is this tiny glimpse we get at the very end of a young Saul soon to become Paul uh, watching this angry mob who at, at this point must just be furious with rage enough to kill someone and they throw their their coats and cloaks at the at the feet of this young man asking him to watch them while they kill another man over his beliefs 
And I think about that part of the story a lot that we know that Saul went on to do horrid and horrendous things uh, to Christians, condemning them to death over and over and over again before he had his conversion and went on to become an incredible man for you, God. But what kind of effect was that situation having on him where all the people around him were in a rage and hollering and yelling and then finally killing a man right in front of Saul? Maybe at this point Saul already had an evil heart. Maybe he would have, if there had even been a vote, maybe he would have voted uh, that Stephen should have been stoned. Or was it the impression of the crowd and the people around him that caused his heart to become dark and, and filled with hatred? You know, we'll never know, but you know, God, you know what happened to him. And I think about Saul a lot. I think actually of Saul a lot more than I think of when he became Paul. Because I was Saul for such a long time of my life. I didn't kill anybody that I know of. But I don't know how much further I actually could have been away from you. When you talk about uh, removing our sins as far from the east as the west, I felt like that with you. I was running as far away from you as possible and doing anything and everything against what you were asking me to do. There are days where I'm still stunned that, that I'm actually alive after some of the stuff that uh, I chose to do, the sins I chose back then. But I think about Saul a lot because in his darkened heart and in my darkened heart, therein lies the power of your grace. Therein lies the power of your mercy and therein lies the power of forgiveness from your son, Jesus Christ. If somebody like Saul can go on to become this amazing man of God for you, completely change his life around. If you can take somebody like me who was doing some awful, horrid things in her life, not only was I making choices for myself, but I was causing other people to sin as well and taking them down with me. And yet here I am. I'm, I'm one of your chosen children. I get to read your word every day. I get to live out the discipleship training that you talk about in this Bible that we're reading. Almost every day I am stunned <laughs> that your choice was to save me, that your choice was to bring me to this point, that your choice was to stop the insanity of those choices I was making and allow me to have this life instead. And so I think about Saul a lot. I suspect at a different time and place I would have been Saul. And I would have allowed somebody to be killed in front of me. And I would have gone along with the crowd and watched their stuff for them. Maybe even thrown a few rocks myself. God, you are so powerful. If anybody is listening right now and thinks that they have done something so bad that there's no way in the world that you could forgive them. And there's no way that their life can change around. <laughs> Please, God, let Saul just sink into their heart. Allow them to see this, this young man who has such evil intent. And through the forgiveness of your son's death, changed his life around. For everyone listening right now, God, I know that you have offered that gift to them. Some of them have taken you up on it. Some of them are still waiting. God, I just encourage them. 
to reach out their hand and take that gift and change their life and quit wallowing in past sins when you don't have to when when God's already forgiven you for them. You have an opportunity to have an amazing life. It's not going to be drama free and it's not going to be stress free. But at the core of everything going on, there's going to be this amazing peace within you. And this beautiful, warm feeling that you were hand chosen by God. Hand chosen. (laughs) Called by name to be one of his children. God, just watch over everyone as they figure out what that decision looks like in their own lives, whether to reach out for it, maybe to ask more questions, perhaps they need to pray about it. I know you have your arms just open wide for them right now, God. I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing everyone who is listening. I thank you for all the amazing lives that you will continue to change like you did to Saul's and you did to mine. Through your grace, through your mercy, and through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray to you today. Amen.